Hello and welcome to the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. We're excited you're joining us tonight. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct your question to a specific school or schools by including their name in your question or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their institutions. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is so important. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening for students in North and South Carolina. So please be sure to sign up for additional sessions to learn about more grade schools. This presentation, as well as all presentations are being recorded. You'll be able to watch them within about a week's time at that same website where you registered, strivescan.com slash Carolinas. I'm really excited to uh, welcome our schools tonight. And the first school that we'll be hearing from is the University of North Carolina, Asheville. Hi, everyone. My name is Savannah Purdy. I'm an admission counselor and proud alumna of UNC Asheville, and I'm so excited to um, virtually be with you all this evening to share you a little bit of information about um, my alma mater. UNC Asheville is the designated liberal arts and sciences institution for the UNC system. And so what that means is that we are really passionate about interdisciplinary learning. So we believe that you're going to be a better biologist if you know a little something about political science. We think that you're going to be a better art historian if you understand economics and business. So no matter what you major in at UNC Asheville, be it art or sciences, we're going to require that you have breadth as well as depth of skills um, and in the courses that you're taking with us. Um, our, our campus is uh, small. I think it's kind of a Goldilocks size. We're about 3,500 students, so not too big, not too small. Um, our average class size on campus is 20 students. Our faculty to student ratio is one to 13, and we are a predominantly undergraduate institution. So as an undergraduate on our campus, you're gonna be in courses that are taught by faculty. We don't have any graduate students or teaching assistants teaching courses on our campus, and the focus is really on you as the undergraduate student. You're gonna be able to build Build relationships with your peers and with your professors that are going to be super valuable to you um, while you're on campus. We try to be as hands-on learning as possible. So this photo right here is from our STEAM studio, which um, is a 12,000 square foot maker space on campus. Um, it is shared by our engineering department and our art department. So there's that collaborative nature there. Um, this particular photo is from a project called Wake, um, which was the, um, is to date the largest public art installation ever in Times Square. So it was designed, built on our campus in 2017 and then transported up to be displayed in New York City for a couple months in 2017. We're really proud of that and think it's a great example of the creative and collaborative and hands-on work that our students are doing on campus. Another way that we um, facilitate hands-on learning is our undergraduate research program. Um, we helped found the National Conference on Undergraduate Research um, back in the 80s, and so about 70% of our graduating class last year did conduct their own research. So this is student-led, student-driven research done by undergraduates with faculty mentors on campus. So again, as an undergraduate institution, you don't have to compete with graduate students for um, time and resources and research opportunities on campus. Um, and so we really encourage all of our students to be curious and be creative about the way that they explore their interests and their passions um, in a hands-on way. These are our majors, um, our top five majors on campus, just to kind of give you an idea of what our student, most of our students are involved in, um, range from uh, environmental studies, biology, psychology, management, which is our business program, and new media. New media is kind of an umbrella of uh, digital art. So animation, graphic design, web design, it's really kind of where art and computer science intersect. Um, we're all about that intersection of art and science here. These are our minors as well as our pre-professional programs, just to kind of give you an idea of all the many things that you can explore while we're here. We don't admit based on major. And like I said, students will be required to take courses in lots of dis different disciplines while they're here. So if you know exactly what you wanna do, we'll help you get there. Um, if you're coming in with an open mind and wanna study a little bit of everything, we are happy and excited to help you find your niche and your passion. 
we are a mile from downtown Asheville. So we get to live and learn where everybody else comes for vacation. Um, downtown Asheville gives our students access to all the arts and the culture and food um, that people love about downtown Asheville, North Carolina. Um, we are also 10 minutes from the Blue Ridge Parkway. So you have access to the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. All of the outdoor activities um, are right in your backyard from hiking, camping, rock climbing, snowboarding, skiing, kayaking, rafting. Um, and we have a fabulous campus recreation and outdoor programs um, organization that provides transportation, equipment, training so that you can really take advantage of everything that's available to you. You can apply via Common App or CFNC. We have early decision, which is binding, being the designated liberal arts school. We want to be able to that we are prioritizing those applications from students who know that they want this specific public liberal arts education. Um, and then we have regular decision, which is non-binding, keeps your options open. Um, both early decision and regular decision students will be considered for merit scholarships based on their application for admission. And then in terms of what we're looking for on the application, we do a really holistic review. We want to get a sense of who you are as a whole student and how you're going to fit into our community here on campus at UNC Asheville. So I start when I'm reading an application, I always start with the essay. I want to hear your voice. I want to know who you are. I want to learn a little bit about you that I'm not going to get from your transcripts and your test scores. Um, so that essay is really important. Then we'll look at your transcript, we'll look at your school profile, see what opportunities are available to you, and we want to see that you're taking advantage of the opportunities that you have within your high school to challenge yourself, whether that's AP, IB, dual enrollment, et cetera. Um, and we wanna see mostly A's and B's. We wanna see you taking risks and pushing yourself and finding a balance between success inside the classroom and outside the classroom. Uh, then we'll look at a recommendation from a counselor or teacher. You're welcome to submit two or three if you'd like, but we just recommend the one. Um, please do contact me um, if you have questions. Um, I work predominantly with students in the Charlotte area and surrounding counties, as well as my home state of Georgia. Um, we pull a lot of students out of the Atlanta area as well. But um, for those of you in the Carolinas, please do reach out to me and I'll be happy to connect you. Um, if you're not one of my students, I'll connect you with one of my colleagues um, who works with students from your area. Um, we hope that you'll connect with us virtually on social media. Um, and we are hosting in-person tours. So I hope that um, as you're able, you will make it up here to Asheville um, to come visit us and check out our campus. Thanks so much for your time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Savannah, for sharing the University of North Carolina Asheville. Our next school tonight is going to be the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Thank you. Um, Sorry about that. All right. Um, so yeah, so very similar to UNC Asheville, uh, UNC uh, at Chapel Hill um, is the first public institution uh, in the nation. Uh, so we're located right in Chapel Hill. Um, I like to start off with the top career interest of our newest incoming class. So as you can see, there's kind of a wide diverse uh, perspectives for our students and what they're interested in, ranging all the way from very uh, set physicians to undecided majors. Um, at UNC Chapel Hill, we don't admit students directly into a major. Uh, instead, we invite them into the College of Arts and Sciences uh, and then encourage them to explore beyond um, just the one set curriculum. So that is one thing um, to keep in mind when it comes to uh, applying into the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Uh, and our students really find that they're able to kind of grow from this diverse perspective from having different um, uh, students uh, in their classes uh, and things of that nature. So we invite students from all over the world um, and all over um, uh, the state and the country to kind of come in and learn more and engage in this broad curriculum and really truly find what it is that they're interested in looking for. Uh, when it comes to the actual application and what we're looking for from the application standpoint, um, so we on the left hand side, you'll see the things that students submit. So we accept both the common application and the coalition application for our first year students. We don't have a preference between either. Um, and then, you know, we'll also require the residency application for students in North Carolina. If you want to be classified as a North Carolina resident for tuition and admissions purposes, uh, we have an $85 application fee, but we'll also accept fee waivers uh, and then extra. And then on the application, you'll have a space where you'll submit your extracurricular activities. Uh, we have three essays, one long one that's going to go to all the schools that you're applying to, and then two short Carolina specific questions um, that are going to be uh, selected for UNC when you select um, us as a, as a supplement for either the common application or the coalition application. Um, well, 
Typically, we've required test scores. I'll explain it a little bit more in a second. Uh, and then Excel at Carolina is an additional kind of portion of our application uh, that's optional for students if they want to be considered for some select opportunities. So that's all required of the students by the deadline. Uh, in addition to that, you know, student also is going to request a letter of recommendation. Uh, we ask for one from um, a core subject teacher, but you're more than welcome to send more if you have more. Secondary school statement, that's also typically sent in by a counselor um, that's just going to provide additional context from the schools that you're coming from. And then your transcripts, which is going to show is the classes that you've taken and then how well you've done in them. Um, the test scores, as you see with an asterisk, so this year, every school in the UNC system and most schools outside of North Carolina um, went test optional because of the pandemic. Uh, at this moment, we're not sure what's going to happen um, with that next year. Um, so if you're applying to begin in the fall of 2022, or you're considering applying to begin in the fall of 2022, I would say just hold tight. Uh, once we have more information on whether that one year waiver is going to be extended, we'll be sure to let folks know. Um, but you know, all that we know right now is that we were just afforded that one year um, when it comes to testing. Um, so those are parts of the applications that students submit. We do a full holistic review at UNC Chapel Hill. So we're looking at every aspect of your application uh, and it's a real life human being that's reading everything. So there's no formula. We don't prioritize one portion over the other. Um, similar to what UNC Asheville just said, you know, we do read your essays. We don't have the, uh, the ability to conduct interviews. So that is truly how we're getting to know our students a little bit better um, is through their essays, through their extra curricular activities, what they're spending their time in outside of the classroom and things of that nature, um, but also through their letters of recommendation and what folks are saying um, regarding um, that as well. Um, so truly every part of the application um, is that we're, what we're reading uh, and we're taking a, a deeper dive into all of it. And that also helps with the uncertainty when it comes to testing um, of folks, you know, that has always just been just one portion of the application that we look at. So certainly, um, you know, don't don't stress too much about it uh, if you're not sure uh, what's going to happen with testing, just because it is the entirety of the application that we're going to be looking at when we're considering you for admission. Um, as far as deadlines go, so UNC, uh, we have our early action deadline of October 15th and our regular decision deadline of January 15th. Neither deadline is binding. Um, so students have the ability to select one or the other and they have until May 1st to make their decision. Uh, we don't give priority for one over the other. The majority of our applicants are applying early. So that is where the majority of our admissions go. Um, but we do give equal opportunity to both um, application deadlines because we understand that some students require a little bit more time to truly get that application set um, by January 15th. So we allow them the ability to do that. Uh, other another thing that I like to point out is the FAFSA and CSS profile uh, deadline for financial aid. And I'll talk about financial aid in a second. Um, so that's due March 1st. Um, that's the priority deadline for, for FAFSA and financial aid. Both of those applications will open up in October uh, and you'll have until that day um, to submit them. Uh, and like I said about financial aid, um, so the FAFSA and CSS profile um, open up in October. Uh, we have, and you have until March 1st, that's a priority deadline to submit them um, when it comes to financial aid. One thing about UNC Chapel Hill is we read applications need blind, um, but once students are accepted, you know, we do strive to meet 100% of demonstrated need. Um, so we do work with students to make sure that we make Carolina as affordable as possible for them. And we use the information provided on both the FAFSA and the CSS profile to do that. Um, so a lot of times, you know, we encourage students to apply early so they can kind of get that full financial aid picture before that May 1st enrollment deadline. Uh, we don't require separate application for any of our scholarships. So simply by applying into UNC, uh, you'll be considered for the majority of our merit scholarships, but most of them um, do come um, from need-based financial aid. Um, if you do have any follow-up questions or anything else, please feel free to make note of our contact information. We'll be in the chat um, to answer any questions that you may have, but please feel free to follow up if we don't get to anything. Great. Thank you so much, Carla, for sharing more about the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Our next school today is going to be Lewisburg College. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So my name is Tamara Staten. I am the director of admissions here at Lewisburg College. Um, so in our office, it includes me. Um, I work with all of Western North Carolina and transfer students. And then we have my colleagues, Hunter Kirby, who works with out of state and Central North Carolina and international students and Catherine, who works with Eastern North Carolina and our Wake County, North Carolina students. 
So where is Lewisburg College? So we are located in um, Franklin County, so not too far from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, we are actually, we're a little bit different than each of, each of these schools. So we are the only two-year private residential college in North Carolina. And so we are two years, but you're actually able to stay on our campus and get the experience of the four-year of just like a four-year institution. And then we are also the oldest two-year private residential college in the country where we were founded in 1787. So a little more about our admissions process. So we are, have actually a role in admission. So we enroll students all the way up until our drop ad period, which is usually a week after our classes begin. And so our application fee is $25, but we actually waive our students application fee if you come for a visit and that's or the in person or a virtual visit as well. Um, we require um, your high school transcript um, for traditional for um, traditional students who's coming from high school. But um, of course, for my transfer students, I would need your college transcript and also a dean's evaluation form. Um, we're looking at your weighted GPA and that you at least have um, the three math um, requirements. We are um, optional for foreign language and also SAT and ACT are optional for this year due to the pandemic as well. Um, our um, requirements are a uh, clear synthesis is 2.0. Um, but starting at a 2.5, you can qualify for academic scholarship money. And we'll talk more about that as well. And then even if you're a little bit below the 2.0, we still have students who may qualify for our summer bridge program or conditionally acceptance. So we have different tiers um, for each student. So um, as I was saying, we are two-year um, schools, but we don't have any trade degrees. All of our, um, we actually have degrees that are going to push you to go to, go to a four-year school. So we have our associates in arts that caters to any and every major. Um, we have our associates in science, whose students may, may be interested in pre-med, physical therapy, exercise science. Um, we have, also have associates in business and education. And so wherever you go your first two years, you're learning these same courses. And it's not to your junior and senior year where you get more specific. So we want to provide you and lay, lay down the foundations of these courses to help you transfer. We also do offer um, additional academic support. So our math lab, reading center, writing lab, and science lab are all um, ran by professors. So they're there during the day and walk-in hours. Um, you don't have to set up an appointment, but say when they go home, you still have the additional help because we have our academic success center that um, students who are strong in their subjects will be there to help you and as peer tutors. We also do have a special program on our campus um, called Learning Partners. So um, Learning Partners is a support system that offers academic coaching and support. And so our um, students are able to um, apply for this program. And it is a fee-based program, but these um, will help you know, assist students more and meet with one-on-one -on -one with academic coaches as well. We also have athletics. So we are in the NJCAA, so National Junior College Athletic Association, where we have division one, two, and three sports. Um, and our division one and two provide um, athletic money depending on getting recruited from the coaches as well. So, um, a little bit of our institutional aid. So definitely um, every year, um, October 1st, the FAFSA opens up, but this is aid that um, can add on to seeing what you qualify for, you know, financial aid. So like I said before, 2.5 or higher, you can qualify for 5,500 in academic scholarship, but in the maximum is 8,000. And then we do have some um, other aids such as like if you're in our dance program, our theater program, our honors program, and then also, you know, your athletic scholarships, and then making sure you, you know, look and apply for outside scholarships as well. So one important office on our campus that I love is our Great Futures office. So that helps with job shadowing, transferring, and internships um, at our institution. So we um, are here to help you guys move to the next step as well. So 92% of our graduates do transfer to a four-year school once leaving from here. And we also do have an articulation agreement with all 16 UNC system institutions, which means there's a binding contract that our students receive their associates in general college or associates in science that um, they were taking all your credits and you know start as a junior so one less thing for families to worry about is will these credits transfer 
And then here is my favorite page um, in my presentation. So seeing where our students go to next. And so um, we're very proud of 92% of our students transferring to a four-year school because that's our goal getting to you, um, getting you to that next school um, to finish up your degree. So um, some of our students you can see did transfer to um, App State. We have um, one of our students transferred to UNCG. Um, Lindsay in the corner, um, she transferred to UNC Chapel Hill once she left from here, but as a lot of in-state schools, but also there are some out-of-state schools that students transfer to. So pretty much our goal is your goal. And then this is our contact information. So feel free, um, check us out um, on our website, contact us if you have any additional questions, we're here to help. Awesome. Thank you so much for presenting on Lewisburg College. So we've heard from three great schools so far, UNC Asheville, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and Lewisburg College, and we have three more to go. I just wanna remind all of our attendees that you have that Q&A button on your screen and you can click that at any time to post a question to these admissions representatives. It can be to a school that's already presented, a school that's to come, um, and to the schools individually or a group question um, about all the programming, study abroad or extracurriculars at each of these different campuses. So please check out that Q&A and think about putting a question in um, so we can help get you the information you want tonight. All right, our next school uh, that we'll be hearing from is going to be Furman University. All right, uh, thank you. Um, so my name is Cody Shovlin. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Furman. Thanks for tuning in to gather some information today. We're excited to be able to connect. Uh, so Furman University is located in Greenville, South Carolina. You can see where we're located on the top left corner of your screen, about halfway between Atlanta and Charlotte on I-85, maybe three and a half, four hours from the beach, about an hour south of Asheville. We just heard from UNCA. Um, so that's kind of where Furman is located. And we describe Greenville kind of like Furman. We say that Furman is kind of bigger side of small. It's not you know, the itty bitty institution or experience, you're going to walk to class and see people you, you know, have met and you're good friends with, people whose faces you recognize, people you've never met before, you know, for all four years during your experience. Uh, and Greenville's kind of, we, we describe Greenville in, in a similar way. Greenville is kind of bigger side of small cities, growing quickly, growing well, there's a lot of great things going on. Would encourage you to look into Berman, obviously, right, but, but also our city. We, as an admissions staff, in the other year, travel probably two, three months out of the year to get a well-rounded group. We've got 48 states represented in our student body, 22 countries, about two, three percent of our student body are international students. Uh, and then just about a fifth of our student body identifying as non-white or Hispanic. One of, I think, the defining characteristics of the, the Furman student experience is the fact that all of our students live on campus for all four years. It's 100% residential. My colleague Maddie's joining me today. She's in the chat, so she's going to put a, a link to a YouTube video that describes housing options on campus. Feel free to check it out uh, at any point. But typically how housing plays out at Furman, it's res halls for two years, apartments for two years. So you've got something to kind of look forward to. And Furman's a liberal arts institution. So what that means is that no matter what it is you choose to study, you're going to get a well-rounded foundational education, whether you're anthropology, history, whatever it is, you're going to be taking courses across campus. Average class size is 15. First year courses probably sit closer to low, mid-20s, uh, but they drop off pretty quickly thereafter. Participation is part of every grade you would receive. Professors hold office hours where they're committed to being in their office with the door open. We're now calling it an open, not an open door policy, but an open Zoom policy. Uh, but when we host campus visitors and I ask, how was tour? Right, they usually lead with, oh my gosh, it's so great. Because it is a gorgeous campus. I would encourage you to control T, go to Google Images, look it up. But I think. More often than not, they quickly follow that with, oh my gosh, it sounds like that professor-student connection, you know, it really sounds like it takes the best interest. So it's coming up on campus tours pretty regularly, and I think it's something that, that defines you know, the Furman experience. And then the Furman Advantage, uh, which is described by these four diamonds, the Furman Advantage is effectively our promise to you, our promise that 
your four years are not going to look like your roommate's four years or the person who sits in front of you in class. They're going to be catered to you and your priorities and your passions, where you are in your journey, um, kind of summed up in that diamond to the left here. And then the other three diamonds sum up how we, you know, make good on that promise, right? So with these high impact experiences, research, internship, study away, Berman students have guaranteed access to those experiences. So it's a promise to you if you want to do it we're going to make it happen, you know, and, and there's great funding there. We had 100% of our research fellows fully funded last summer in the middle of COVID-19 uh, with about 80% of our internship fellows fully funded. Right? So there's great ways to, to take advantage of these opportunities. You're going to have multiple advisors and mentors, and not only just the advisors on campus that are going to make sure you're signing up for classes by a certain date and you know, making sure you're taking the right classes at the right time to graduate in, in four years. You're going to be connected to alums in the field that, that you're looking to go into, mentors in the renewable area. Um, so it's a lot more than just that you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 50 minute experience. And then talking about the application process, cost of attendance, we'll start with the application process on the left here. Uh, Furman, like several other institutions we've heard from today, uh, Furman will accept either the common application or the co coalition application. Uh, no preference between the two. Uh, and then we'll also need your transcript and your school report. When you submit your application, the other two documents, transcript, school report, uh, your high school is prompted to send us those documents. So you need to worry about the transcript and everything else should fall into place, but we'll certainly be in touch if if we need to close some loose ends. And then with optional materials, uh, Furman is, you'll see in the middle there, test optional, optional test scores. So we don't require that students take the SAT or ACT to be considered for admission or merit scholarship opportunities. Uh, Furman has been test optional for about 10 years now. Uh, and we are excited you know, to be able to continue that on. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you've got cost of attendance. Furman for many of our students is not this option, you know, 66 is, is you know, quite a sum. So we, you know, two things I want to mention about that. One is that very, very few things are not included in 66. 66 includes printing and laundry facilities and peer assisted learning. And you know, beyond 66, it's buying books twice a year. And that's about it. And then the second piece I wanted to mention is that very few are paying the full 66. On average, last year we offered about $36,000 per year in financial assistance to the students who decided to enroll at Furman. Um, so we absolutely want to have that conversation with you. We know it's not, so, you know, 66 is not you know, the nicest number to look at, um, but hopefully we can change the conversation a little bit. And with that, I'll turn it back over. Great, thank you so much for presenting on Furman University tonight. All right, our next school is going to be the Savannah College of Art and Design. Hello everyone, my name is Leah Baer and I am the Assistant Director of Admission here at SCAD. And today we're going to learn a little bit about what opportunities you have with us and some options for creative careers. So first we'll throw it back with a little history lesson. We were actually founded in 1978 and for more than 40 creative years we've grown to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world. With campus locations in Atlanta, Georgia, a beautiful study abroad location in La Crosse, France, our home base in Savannah, Georgia, and then of course our comprehensive e-learning program. Now, the university is incredibly diverse and we have about 15,000 students representing all 50 states in over 100 different countries. And we do offer more programs of study and specialization than any other art and design school in the US. You'll see we kind of cover the gamut here from fine arts to STEM and STEAM. Now with those 100 programs, we've got over 40 major programs and 75 minor programs. But no matter what program you end up here with SCAD, one thing is at the core of everything we do. And that is our employment rates and how our students get jobs. So 99% of the spring 2019 alumni at SCAD were either employed, seeking further education or both within 10 months. And 91% of those students were doing so in a creative field. And this really, truly speaks volumes about our amazing students and their ambition, because SCAD alumni and their work are truly everywhere. Take, for instance, Christopher John Rogers. Following his graduation from SCAD, 
Christopher John Rogers launched his own line with his fellow SCAD B, and you may have seen some of his garments on icons like Michelle Obama, Lizzo, and Lady Gaga. So here at SCAD, we champion a culture of small class fittings and individualized attention for each and every one of our students. And our professors are here to help. So from the boardroom to the classroom, they're here to leverage their experience and the networks that they've built through their career to help you guys succeed in today's ever-changing global marketplace. So whether you see yourself on the runway, the red carpet, or even the cover of Forbes, there is truly a place here for you at SCAD. And as a student, you'll have the opportunities to collaborate with leading companies through SCAD Pro. This is where our students dream of design solutions for global brands. Recently, our students reimagined Disney resorts, pitched the future of advertising for Google, and even got to market a driverless car for Volvo. SCAD Pro has hosted more than 500 collaborations, over 300 top brands, and it's actually led to over 200 direct job offers for our students. Proving that real world experience is what's gonna set you apart from your competition. Now, in and out of the classroom, we've got everything you can want. We have over a hundred different clones at both our Atlanta and our Savannah locations. They range from cultural, community, to leadership. And then of course, we also have an intramural and varsity sports, which is kind of cool. If you are an artist, it's not always often that you do get sports at an art school. Best part, when you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of our campus locations. So you can study in at SCAD Atlanta, a thriving film and business production hub, venture to the peaceful scenic hills of Southern France in the Cough, and then circle back around the globe to the historic squares and cobblestone streets of Savannah, Georgia. And then of course, e-learning is ready for you wherever you are. Now for my high school students here today, you can begin your SCAD journey through college programs online or at a university location. So if you're a rising freshman, sophomore, or junior, you can actually develop your talents at a SCAD Summer Seminars Workshop, a week-long program in Atlanta, Savannah, or online. And if you're a high school senior, you can do the same thing. But instead of taking a week-long workshop, you'll be enrolled in two SCAD university classes for five weeks. And then, of course, we also have a joint enrollment program for my juniors and seniors in high school, where you can earn joint enrollment credits online while maintaining your high school curriculum. So a quick brief overview of how to apply. First, apply at scad.edu, where you'll be assigned a personalized admissions advisor. They'll help you complete your custom checklist, submitting things like test scores and transcripts. Keep in mind, we are test optional through fall 2022. Now, a portfolio is not required, but we would encourage you to submit one for a portfolio scholarship. And if you have above a 3.0 GPA, you're likely going to be considered for an academic scholarship as well. Steps three and four, come visit us. We are open for in-person tours in Atlanta and Savannah, as well as our open house SCAD days. If you're not quite ready to come see us on campus, you can always connect with us on our social media platforms. I would suggest checking out our YouTube channel. It shows you everything from student work, interviews with alumni, and more. Now, if you are keen to stay in touch with me, grab your phone, open your camera app, and scan my QR code. This will help you stay connected with me today. And then of course, as you continue the process, keep in touch. This is my contact information, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in the chat below so you guys don't have to rush to grab this screenshot. Again, Leah with the Savannah College of Art and Design, and I appreciate your time this afternoon. Wonderful, thank you so much, Leah, for presenting on SCAD for us. Okay, we are going to our sixth school next. I'm excited to introduce you, uh, USC Upstate. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, give me just a second while I share my screen with you. All right, well, my name is Eric Chapman. I am our Assistant Director for Freshman Enrollment at USC Upstate. Um, if you're not familiar with where we are, we're located in Spartanburg, South Carolina, um, between uh, Greenville and, and Charlotte, and then a really good area to travel between those areas as well. But Spartanburg is a very growing a rapidly growing area. We have tons of stuff to do in downtown Spartanburg. Uh, we have a beautiful 330 acre campus here. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about Upstate, uh, we were ranked the number one public regional college in the South. That ranking is by US News and World Report. And we've also been ranked among colleges of distinction. Um, not only was our school ranked as a college of distinction, 
but also our schools of business, nursing, and education were individually uh, ranked among colleges of distinction as well. So we're really proud of those programs um, and all of our uh, 40 degrees and, and majors here at Upstate. Um, Upstate does have about 6,000 students, and we have uh, students from 29 states and 14 different nations, which, make, which makes us uh, a very diverse campus. So you have students from not only just all over the United States, um, but from all over the, the world. So you get to be exposed to people from all different walks of life and different cultures uh, and meet all sorts of amazing people here at Upstate. Um, one thing people love about our class sizes is we have a student faculty ratio of 18 to 1. That makes our class sizes around um, that 25 students max kind of area where you're going to get to make those connections with your teachers. Uh, and those connections not only will help you in the classroom, but will help and set you up with connections after you graduate. Um, if you go to graduate school with letters of recommendation and just to form bonds that are going to uh, just help propel you on after you graduate here at Upstate. Nearly 100% of those faculty you'll be working with are, um, do have the highest degrees in their fields from prestigious universities, not just across the United States, but um, from across the globe. So we're really proud of our faculty here and you're going to get an excellent um, education here at USC Upstate. Um, like I mentioned, we have over 40 different degree programs here at Upstate. So um, we have plenty to choose from with our top programs being in nursing business and education. Um, we also have a new program in cybersecurity as well. Upstate has a wonderful campus life and student life opportunities here at Upstate. Like I mentioned, we have a beautiful 330 acre campus. So you're out here, you're not in the middle of a city, you kind of have your own space out here at Upstate. Plenty of green space to be outside and enjoy the weather um, when it's nice out and um, just beautiful trees to you know, get shade in the summer uh, and just really enjoy being out in nature on our, on our beautiful campus. Um, we do have the George, just some of our quick highlights for our university. The George is our business school. It's in downtown Spartanburg, so you're kind of in the hub where everything is going on at. That is a $30 million uh, facility with over 60,000 square feet. It's an absolutely gorgeous uh, building with a stock market exchange lab, and it's an excellent just spot for our business students to learn and, and get a great education. Um, our health education is another highlight here. It has an indoor track, swimming pool, um, hot tub, sauna, all that stuff you can enjoy. Uh, also houses our nursing simulation lab which is the largest simulation lab in the state that's dedicated only to nursing. Um, so there may be other larger simulation labs, but they have to share those with other programs. At Upstate, it's dedicated only to our nursing students. Um, and then there are tons of stuff here to do on campus for student life. Other than 90 different clubs and organizations, you've got 13 nationally affiliated fraternities and sororities. Um, so tons of ways to get plugged in, network, meet people, and make those connections that you know, will last you a lifetime here. Um, one thing we're excited about is uh, returning to full function in the fall. So we're going to be back full face-to-face -face instruction. Uh, we've announced that, and we're really happy about that to be able to bring that back for our students. Um, so uh, with that, we're going to be returning to normal event schedule. So uh, we have an Upstate 48, which is 48 days of nonstop events at the beginning of each semester. I mean, at the beginning of each year, um, and those start off athletics, our stadium party. Um, you're going to get free gear, uh, free upstate stuff, and get to go to free events, start networking, meeting people, and kind of getting back to a sense of normalcy here. Um, maybe a little bit more than what we had, um, get back to where we were before COVID. Um, so those events are really exciting. We have homecoming actually this week, uh, which is an exciting event for us here uh, as upstate as well. If you like sports, we have a wonderful Division One sports. I don't know if you keep up with uh, sports too much, but um, our softball program just had some highlights on ESPN. Our, our baseball team is doing great this year, um, has beat Clemson, um, which is really exciting for us to go compete at that level and knock off Clemson. Um, and then we have Spartans that go on and compete professionally. Um, we got Tori Craig that plays for the Denver Nuggets, is a proud upstate alum. Um, so we have excellent athletes and student athletes at that to come through uh, USC Upstate. Um, so if you're interested in going to those sports, they're, they're exciting to go watch. Softball is always exciting, and, and they're always ranked in the top um, of Division I. And baseball is slowly getting ranked here as well. So um, you have excellent place and excellent facilities to go and watch um, our sporting events. Housing at Upstate, we do have two options called the Magnolia House and Palmetto House. They're really different as their name. So the room layouts are going to be the same. What you get in those rooms is going to be the same. So. You have uh, three options now, a single, double, and super single suite style rooms. Um, plenty of space um, for you there and plenty of room options uh, as well for you to uh, stay comfortable and live in just beautiful facilities that we have on campus. And 
you can see the pictures of our housing there. Last thing I want to do is just cover some um, application stuff with you real quick. So we do have uh, applications open now. You can apply uh, if you're getting ready to come in. All we need is transcripts and test scores. Um, we are test optional this year. So if you don't have test scores, just send us your transcript so we can evaluate that and get a decision for you. All right, thank you. Awesome, Eric, thank you so much for presenting on USC Upstate. All right, so we've heard from sixth grade schools. We have a few more minutes of time together. So if there are any questions in the Q&A you wanna to ask to any of these admissions representatives, please drop them in there. And also make sure that you're checking the chat. Contact information, links to websites are being dropped there. So grab that information so that you have it at hand so you can follow up and ask questions. So as you can see, one a representative from each school is popping up back online, um, back on camera. So we have time for one question uh, to uh, chat about while we let everyone get their info or think about last minute questions. So I would love to hear uh, from each of you to share a favorite event or tradition on campus um, that really gives a little extra insight into your student experience. We'll go in the same order that you presented. When the representative ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your microphone and answer away. And we'll um, start first with the University of North Carolina Asheville. Sure, so uh, my favorite campus tradition is uh, exam breakfast, um, which we have on the first night of the, the night of the first day of exams every semester. Um, it is held in our campus dining hall. It is breakfast food as a late night dinner. And what I love about it is that our faculty and staff come in and serve um, the meal. So after, you know, when students are ready to kind of blow off steam after the first day of exams, you have your faculty and staff there serving you breakfast food and there's a karaoke bar and students are just kind of blowing off steam in the Dining hall, it's a really good time. Uh, yeah, so this is this is definitely a tough one um, for me. So I also attended UNC Chapel Hill as an undergrad, uh, in addition to, to working in it now as a staff member. Um, and there's so many great traditions, but I think the one I'll probably have to choose uh, is the first weekend right before classes start. Uh, first year and transfer students are invited to what's called convocation, where the, you know they learn all the chants for the sporting events and things like that, and just engage with the community. And then that immediately start lends into what's called Fall Fest, uh, which is all the different clubs and organizations and different departments on campus essentially just block out one of the main streets on Chapel Hill's campus uh, and just table. And it's just a great recruitment and event um, for incoming students to kind of engage and learn more about the campus and learn more about ways to get involved. But they also get a bunch of free stuff and free food and just meet their classmates. All the upperclassmen also come back and join uh, and just engage with that. Either they're tabling themselves or they're just there for, for some of the freebies that, that are handing out. Um, but I think that really encapsulates kind of the full experience of Carolina. That really welcomes the full experience at Carolina. It's one of the first things you'll do where you'll see the campus community as a whole. You'll see everyone engaged together and you'll see everyone kind of come together. And it's a great way to learn more about different ways to get involved and just all the great opportunities that are available to students. I um, mean, you'll see like different organizations perform. Uh, so, so really it's just a great experience. And I think that that might have to be the favorite one that I pick for now. <laughs> All right, well, mine is um, some from Lewisburg College and like the other two ladies, I attended Lewisburg. So um, I tell my students, definitely, if you're good here, you might have a job once you graduate. Um, <laughs> so um, I enjoy, we called it hurricane day. So we are um, hurricanes. Um, and so that was, that usually happens in May. Um, so when the weather is getting better. Um, so we break, um, students get out of class early and pretty much they're given, um, like a room assignment by their RA. Um, RA. And so um, a staff or a faculty member, I actually gather a group of students and have different open discussions. Um, so I remember um, the year before last, it was actually, you know, what, re what does respect mean to you? And so like we might take different um, um, definitions and, you know, get to know these students, what things mean to them. And then after it, there's like food trucks out. Um, we give them shirts. Um, so maybe hurricane day and the, the year we have it. And um, as a student, I went to any event with free shirts. So like free shirts, I was there. So I, <laughs> that was my favorite time and just being able to openly like talk to a faculty or staff member and um, just let down your hair. And then also um, the food trucks and then also um, like snow cones were given and just having a good time. Yeah, for students on the call today, you probably only need to pack like three t-shirts for college. 
because they're going to give you so, so many. My favorite Furman tradition is on LDOC, last day of class, uh, the university will come together under the, or excuse me, around the uh, fountain in front of our library, and there's stereos and floaties and giveaways and fried Oreos and like customizable swag. It's just this huge celebration of what they've done for the year. Um, and then kind of unofficially, our students will go fountain hopping as well. We've got 13 fountains, so they'll go fountain hopping, kind of a fun tradition. Of course, you know, in all black, under the cover of darkness, running from FUPO, Furman Police. So it's my favorite tradition. Hey guys, I'm with SCAD. Uh, we're lucky at SCAD to have a number of signature events that we host throughout the year, like our television festival, game festival, and fashion show. But my favorite signature event by far is our film festival. It's the largest university-run film festival in the world, and we do it big. I mean, I can't keep you with fountain hopping, but I will tell you, we literally roll out a red carpet down Main Street. And the best part is we do have producers, actors, industry professionals that come in and join us for the week. And US students are not only being able to attend the film festival and the screenings, but you're getting those actors like John Krasinski to come into your film classes or your performing arts classes and attend and learn from them. So there's some big names and I'll name drop a little bit, but it's always my, my favorite time of year when the announcements of who's attending rolls out. All right, so I know I don't have a whole lot of time, but um, we have a, uh, wonderful tradition here at USC. You're fine here, don't worry. Okay, it's called our stadium party. Um, you know, I, same thing as some of the people on the call. I went to USC Upstate, was a student here, was an athlete here. And that was always an event I looked forward to every year because you get to see people coming back to campus. Um, all of us athletes are there, um, faculty, staff, students, um, freshman students, everybody's on campus that day. Of course, the t-shirts, we get free t-shirts, free gear, free hats free cups or whatever first ones in line you can get all this cool stuff and you know have those things i still have shirts um, from those events and memories from just getting to meet all those people and they've had uh they had a hypnotist come out which i still don't know how real i felt like he was but you know hypnotists musicians um so it's just a huge event and wonderful time for everybody to kick off the school year I love hearing these events because I just love the little insight that it gets. And I hope attendees think, let me go online. Let me check out some social media. Like, can I see myself on campus at these events? And yes, free food, free t-shirts, free swag. It is the currency of a college student. I agree with that. Well, thank you everyone for taking the time to be with us. We are coming to the end. First, I want to say thank you to these admissions representatives. You all represented your schools so well. And not just the facts and the figures, but in talking about you know, what makes each place really special and your passion for that student experience in and out of the classroom. For everyone who's watching, thank you, whether it's live or the recording, I hope that you're inspired to be curious, to ask more questions and learn even more about these schools. Six minutes is just too short, so this is a great sneak peek, but reach out. These admissions representatives and all of their colleagues are your number one resource. They are there to answer all your questions and help you in this journey. As you close your window tonight, there's gonna to be a link to a very quick four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback that you can provide us. I promise, four questions, real short. Um, also, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted for students in North and South Carolina. Please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. In about a week's time, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings so you can learn more at the same website where you registered. And that would be strivescan.com slash Carolinas. Thank you again, everyone, for taking time out today and best wishes in your college search and decision process. Good night.